If you are working with the search box element, this one right here, and uh, you have it set to geographic places, you can do quite a bit with it. I can type in something like the Empire State Building, and you can see my search results are being auto-completed. Uh, let me back up a little so we can see some of our other options, and, uh, and offering me options to choose from there. This element, when you have it set to search geographic locations, is connected to Google. And so we're actually getting Google results. Um, and what's awesome about this is that you don't only have to know what the address is for some place. You can also type in the names of businesses, of buildings, points of interest, things like that, um, and you will get results. So if I go into my editor, um, this is the search box element, this one right here. This is a bubble element, no plugin uh, needed to use this. And I have it set up to geographic places choice style. So that's how it's connected to Google results as opposed to results from your database, which would be dynamic choices or static choices, which you, you know, type in here in this section. Um, now, I'm going to have a text element here so you can see what you can extract from a selection you make in this, uh, you know, in the autocomplete. When you choose one, what can you then um, pull out of that? So this text element is going to show you. I'm going to go to the search boxes value. All right. And we can see that we can display the full formatted address of whatever um, selection you make from that autocomplete list, a link to the Google Maps. Um, you have some information about the coordinates, time zone, daylight savings, offset, all of that stuff, including this function here, extract. When you select extract, you can see that you can pull out individual components from the address, which is very, very helpful if you just want to see city of the value you chose or just the floor, room number, the country code, any of that stuff. Great. So the only um, thing that you cannot get out of this, and I'm going to show you how to work around it, is a the place name of some point of interest. So I wouldn't actually be able to extract the words Empire State Building, um, you know, or Eiffel Tower or Statue of Liberty if that's what I was searching. I would really only be able to extract their physical address uh, addresses um, and you know uh, geographic coordinates and things like that. But I wouldn't actually be able to pull out place names. And uh, if you are using this search box to be able to then um, extract a place name, you're not going to be able to. Instead, what you need to do is use a different um, element. So I'm going to show you what you need. First, you need to install this plugin, Google Places. This is a bubble plugin. It's not um, installed into your app automatically. You have to go get it. So under your plugin section, click on add plugins, search for Google Places, and make sure that you're installing the one that is published by Bubble. There are a few out there. And then you're going to have to get an API key from Google in order to use this plugin. So uh, if you go over to Google's console, the developer console, it is console.developers.google.com um, and head over to the API library once you have an account without, you know, um, create a project and everything within this uh, dashboard. Go to the API library and search for Places API, enable that API, and grab an API key. Now, I do have much more in-depth lessons about how to create your API keys and set up your console within my VIP membership. If you're interested in joining, I have tons of additional tutorials on how to use Bubble and how to do things like this. Um, I encourage you to read about it below in the description if you are not already a member. So once you do have your API key from the Google Console for the Places API, you can enter that into the plugin settings here. Now you can get more information about Google Places. So instead of using this search box, let me remove this text here. I'm going to use a regular input to perform my search because we don't want any auto completing. So I'm just going to have a regular input and I need to build the display for the search results myself. So where the search box kind of created that auto complete list for you, we now need to do a little bit more manually. So I'm going to add a repeating group 
to um, my page here. And this is just going to sit under my search input. And the type of content for this repeating group is going to be Google Place. This only shows up when I have the plugin installed. And the data source, now that we're using a plugin, is going to come from an external API. In other words, the Google Places API. So I will select Get Data from External API. And my API provider is going to be, I'm just going to search to filter those down, Get Google Places. Okay. Now when you select that, you can see you actually have a few more options for performing your place search. All I'm going to do right now is just set the query to equal the value of this input. Whatever I type in here is what I want um, the API to search against. So I will insert the input's value as my query. You can filter it down even further by setting up a location and a radius around that location. You can even filter it down by type if you'd like. I'm actually going to go ahead and select cafe so that we can do a search on different uh, cafes in uh, without a location uh, restriction, just kind of anywhere in the world. All right, now I'm going to add a text to the repeating group. And this text is going to display the current cell's Google Place name. This is what I was ultimately trying to extract, where the search box wasn't able to get that. Um, but you see you have other things that you can also pull out the um, place ID if you want to work with the API a bit further, um, whether it's open now, things like that, and the address, which I'm also going to display. So I'm going to show the Google Place's name. I'm going to copy this text and underneath do address. Okay, now I'm going to run this page so that I can perform a search. Let's do coffee. And I can see, uh, because I've also filtered this search to only show cafes, I'm definitely going to get coffee uh, places back. But now I can see I have a list of all of my places where the place name is at the top and we have the address right below it. So this is basically rebuilding the search box autocomplete uh, result list with our own elements, repeating group, and text elements. And of course, I can design this much differently. I can make it look a little bit nicer, definitely make it wider, things like that. Uh, but that's how you would go about uh, searching Google Places so that you can also retrieve the name uh, and other extra pieces of information and be able to have more control over it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are interested in joining the VIP membership where you can get tons and tons more tutorials just like this, even more in-depth ones as well, uh, please check out the description below.